In this video we're going to be taking a look at using actions in Photoshop Elements. So uh, why am I starting off here in Photoshop? Well I know from talking to many of you who may have older versions of Photoshop you're looking to upgrade but rather than going down the Photoshop route you're now looking to go down the Lightroom and the Elements route. So many of the actions that you have in your version of Photoshop you'll be able to run in Photoshop Elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, saving those actions then loading them into Elements. Now the one I'm going to select I'm just going to come to my Actions panel by if I come up to Window dropping down there it is Actions. This will either open it for you or it just reveals it. There's mine. There's my Action panel. Clicking it, placing it on the desktop these are all the various actions. This particular one we created in one of my last videos and if we just unfold it there it is there. It's the resize, the stroke and the sharpen. Now I'm going to click on this and if I just unfold it you see there's all the various bits and pieces that went into this action and if we just take a look, if I come to the top corner clicking on this, if we drop down to save action you'll notice the way it's greyed out that is because you can only save a set in other words you can only save a folder so what you can do is if you drop down if you create a set it's asking us for a name and I'm just gonna put in here I'll tell you what I was put in PSE for Photoshop elements so it's just a little bit of a, a test folder in it goes you can then click on the actions that you want and if I click on this one I can drag it down you notice that little black line I can now place it into this folder and I can do that with any of the other actions that I have. What I have found if I just come to this folder here my action pack 2 if I scroll right the way down to and uh, there it is there the black and white actions if I come and click drag this down larger come to uh, this one's here it's one of my favorite black and whites. Drag and place this down. Now, in theory, this shouldn't even work in Photoshop Elements, but I'll show you a little secret. Right, clicking on the set, the folder. Let's just fold these up out of the way because it's getting just a little bit chaotic there. So this is now the folder, the set that we're going to save, that PSE. We're going to come to the top corner. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to go to Save Action. It's now asking me for a location. I'm going to select my desktop and there's our PSE. I'm going to click on it. If I just click down, drag it in, and you'll notice there it is, it's got the same name, it's identical to that of the set that we've saved, and it's a .atn. That's the actual extension, the .atn. Right, let's come into Photoshop Elements. First thing we're going to do is to open up the Action Panel. Now you'll find the Actions Panel in exactly the same location as it is in Photoshop. It's under Window. There it is right on the top there. It's Actions. That has now opened our Actions Panel. If we come to this little area on the side, we're going to click on this. Dropping down, we're going to go to Load Actions. Now navigate your way to where you've saved the actions. Mine's on my desktop. I'm going to click on our PSE. And if I click on this, you'll notice the way it highlights. I'm going to press Command or Control. And you can actually select as many different actions as you want. As soon as I click on Open, you can see how quickly and easily that actually opened into Elements. Right, let's just come to the PSE for, uh, folder. I'm going to click on this, dropping down. There's our black and white selection and our resize stroke sharpen. If we take a look at this, now you may remember when we actually created this action, we put in toggles which stops the, when we were running through the action where it came down to the resize stroke. The duplicate first document, it stopped here and it asked us if we wanted to rename it. Then it came through and there were other areas where it actually stopped at as well. So let's just take a look. I'm going to click on the resize stroke sharpen. We're going to click on play. Now this is going to shoot through and there it is. It stopped. It's asking us to rename it. This is under the duplicate image. Don't forget, this is going to duplicate our original file just going to call this King and press enter or return it's going to continue to play it's now stopped at the fit image so again that toggle which you can't see has kicked in let's put in the figure I'm going to put in I know 1600 just pressing tab on the keyboard go for 1600 again pressing enter or return or clicking on OK it's come through to the style settings now the style setting of course is for the stroke I've got the hand tool selected as we've done before just press command or control to zoom in you can see it's applied a stroke line but there's nothing showing here if there's nothing showing simply click OK we can come in and we can adjust this a little bit later on I'll show you how we can do that right for the sharpening 
we've got Smart Sharpen. This has opened up the Adjust Sharpness, which I think is a, it's a really good dialog box. Uh, it, exactly the same really as the Smart Sharpen. We've got the amount at the top. Incidentally, if you were using the Unsharp Mask, it would open the Unsharp Mask dialog that is in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to take the amount up to this area. Not a particularly good for sharpening but just clicking down a good example I was meaning to say radius we're going to leave at one pixel remove lens blur again we've got the choice the Gaussian blur or the motion blur more refined uh, before it was what was it it was called more accurate I think that's something like that so we're going to leave that and we're going to click OK through it shoots it has now stopped in layers with that uh, hide all mask there so I just come across pick up the gradient tool we drop down make sure we got the radial gradient clicking in the window selecting the foreground to transparent that's the second little icon in there it is foreground through to transparent we got white selected if you've got uh, black simply press X on the keyboard we can now come in with the gradient tools going to give us a radius something like that so clicking down nice soft transition yeah, it doesn't look particularly good. We're in at 66.67. If you go into 100%, you'll find it looks better. <laughs> that looks better like that. If we just uh, use Command E or Control E, that's going to merge it down or go to Layer. There it is there. Merge down, Command E, Control E. When we look at it at this stage, if I just move across, just pressing the space bar, there's that stroke line. Now, to make this a little bit bigger, I'm going to use Command 0, Control 0 we can come up to where it says effects now this is indicating a layer style if we double click there it is there's our style setting it's ticked for stroke and we're going to take this up it's five pixels we're going to increase this up to 16 let's drop it back a little bit 13 will be good we can change the color as well clicking in the window you can have whatever color you want bring your cursor out you can select a color from the image that looks really good like that simply going to click OK click in OK again and command e control e there is our finished image if we just come up to image if we go to resize image size 1600 that's the figure we put in the resolution has remained the same the original document was only uh, 72 for the resolution on that so there it is it's gone through it's resized the image for us it's applied the stroke border and we've been able to use the selective sharpening if i just zoom out to 50 percent you can see that looks better off you zoom into 100 percent you can see the way that sharpened up the image looking pretty good what about this black and white selection well let's come again to our master copy there it is in layers just let me show you image if i come down to resize image size there it is that's what i was talking about with the resolution at 72 on this particular image now the black and white selection this is my favorite way of producing a black and white image in theory it shouldn't work because we're actually going to be using sort of uh, selections for the highlights and uh, inverting them so it's using channels so shouldn't really work should it in photoshop elements but let's take a look if i just unfold this you can see there it is going through and uh, yep yeah, click in play this time nothing stopping but it shoots through until we reach the end where it press continue to flatten or stop to save it in layers so I'm going to click stop to save it in layers and you can see I really like this method of using there's our black and white you can change the blend mode on this to get whatever tonal range you want in the image just reduce the opacity down you can even come over if you want to add a little bit of tone in we can come into the window let's select something in that nice tone something like that click OK to that you'll notice there it is in the foreground color picking up the paint bucket the fill tool if we drop this in and change the blend mode to something like that there it is and we can tone our picture as well you might even want to change the blend mode to multiply just to there it is nice rich tones come in job done something we shouldn't be able to do but we can so it's well worth trying if you've got any other actions you know, load them into Photoshop elements see how they run if you find they don't run particularly well all you have to do is just go to them click on them and then click on the little bin icon that is then going to delete the selected uh, action and you can do exactly the same for a folder or for a set you can delete the set delete the selected set and there it is gone so 
go on, give it a try. Incidentally, I will be including in along with a full size video on my uh, members area. You'll also get the action pack too, which has got a whole load of frameworks and including this black and white. So pop along to the website, but until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.